So take that Q and A, take the questions that didn't get answered um, and post them over in the discussion group afterwards um, and continue the conversation there. Um, one of the things that also tends to frustrate me about webinars is that once the webinar is over, that chat log is gone. And so if you as an attendee or as a speaker missed what was happening, um, you can't go back and reference it necessarily. So take that chat log, post it in the discussion group, and then people can come back and reference it. So again, you kind of build that added value. Um, from a session perspective, you have options to do live sessions. That does require um, using a tool like Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, whatever, um, whatever tool of choice you would like. Um, but you can build the conference schedule here. Um, when, um, once you, you, know, you build the schedule here, um, people can link off to register in whatever registration system, like WebEx, I know gives people personalized URLs. Um, so you'd send them off to that WebEx um, registration page to get that URL. Um, then people can download it to their calendar. It builds that ICS file, puts it on their calendar, so then they get the reminder of when to show up. Um, you can also do recorded sessions, and those, uh, those can either live on our site, if you have like the MP4 file, it just gets embedded. I think this one's an embedded example. Um, that just gets embedded here. Uh, or you can link off to, if you have a learning management system, uh, if you have recorded webinars like Zoom gives you a choice of whether you want to download the file and kind of own that MP4 or if you want to host it on the Zoom cloud, um, you can do that either way. Uh, the great thing, if you have an LMS and you want to host it on the LMS, people can stay right here within the context of the Higher Logic site, um, but you get all of the benefits of the LMS. So if people need to take interactive quizzes, um, have those knowledge checks in order to earn their CEs, you still have that full functionality embedded here. Um, I see I don't have this example here, but you can also add additional resources. So you can have the video file, but then add additional PDFs, Word documents, uh, Excel files, whatever it may be, that go along with that video, um, which is a great thing if speakers want to provide additional resources, again, coming back to that added value, um, they can put them here in the library alongside their video or as a separate entry, um, which is, you know, again, the more value you can be providing people right now, this, you know, it makes this whole format so much richer. And, you know, and I think people, sometimes look at these virtual conferences. I had someone say the other day, I can't believe they're charging that much for a virtual event. And it's like, well, if a virtual event is done right, I think it can actually provide people so much more than a live event can. Um, yeah, you're, you may not be getting the food and the drinks and whatever else, but you can get a lot more learning and a lot more resources that can do you good, more good, that's horrible English, um, in the long run. Um, there are, um, you can also see all the attendees that are interested in that topic, connect with them, you know, send contact requests, send the messages. Um, there are ways to highlight your speakers. Um, we made a, an attractive kind of plug and play template uh, that again, you can just click in there, edit, you know, put in your, um, your keynote speakers, their bio, their photo, make sure everyone's getting their due. Um, there's a search for your speakers so people can reach out to them. They can figure out who's speaking on what topic. Um, and then similarly to like the member directory in Collaborate, there is a directory of the attendees. So people can go in and search just in general, like search across the conference, um, or there is the, the more specific attendee search for each track. All right. 
So that is my quick overview of everything. Looks like we've got some questions. Yeah, I'll look in there and see what I see in there. Uh, and I'll ask you some of these questions, Heather, if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you were talking about some of the ideas and, and, and things you guys have about sponsorship engagement. You might yeah. have a list of those things. Is yeah. that something you could share with the group now or something you can send me later and I can make it part of the materials? Um, I, we can absolutely make it part of the materials. Um, and there are also, a, we've got several blogs on the Higher Logic site. Um, that they can access through there as well, but I will share those with you, um, cool. with you too, Reggie. Yep. Thank you. Can yep. an attendee register for the entire meeting through uh, through somebody's AMS, for example, versus individual live sessions? Uh, absolutely. Let's. Um, there's actually there's a register button on here, um, and that can link off to whatever register registration system you already have in place that you're using. So yes, we would actually recommend that you use your AMS, Cvent, whatever um, event registration system you're using, um, and you use that. You can use that to control access to this site. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yep. Great question. Um, for the live sessions, and I think you re you re referred to this already, but for the live sessions, is it possible to embed the live stream and stride of the higher logic platform? I think you yeah. showed us that. Or, or must it send attendees out an external link? So my, here's my question, even if it's not embedded, you, you would, people would have the ability to put the link to Zoom right there in Higher Logic so that people can just click on that link. Is that correct? That is correct. We are working with Zoom right now on a, on a full integrated embedded solution. Um, right now it does link off to there. Um, there is, there are ways you can do a live embed. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little quirky right now. I'm going to be completely honest. Um, if someone really wanted to do it, we could work with them to do it. Um, yeah. yeah, so, but yeah, I think kind of a, a better solution is, you know, you've got your link right there. You know, you build, you build it in. It, it is pretty seamless to people to come to the Higher Logic site, click on that link, it pops out, it goes over to Zoom or whatever, and then they come back to the site for the other resources. Great. Um, can you can you host a live chat with a pre-recorded session broadcast? Um, so we are um, <laughs> we are super close to being able to do that. Um, we've actually uh, there's a commenting feature with the with the pre-recorded sessions, and um, and one of our developers has realized like has figured out how to use that commenting feature as a live chat. So that is like inches away from being repurposed as that. Um, yeah. You can do it to some extent now um, to use that commenting, but yeah, it's, it's very close. All right. um, do you have to have higher logic to use this to use this particular module? Do you have to have the other other modules? Um, so right now, for anyone who had an event planned um, from basically planned from or live event planned from April through December. Um, you know, we are, we've always been very committed to the association world and we realize everyone is in a really tough situation. So anyone who had a, a live event planned through December, um, we are actually giving this offering to people for free um, for a 90 day period. Wow. Um, so yeah, um, it's, it is, it's basically, it's our um, kind of our, our way of taking care of the association space. So yeah, if, um, there is a sign up form on higherlogic.com. So if you just go there, fill out the form, we'll, we'll take care of you. Um, this is more of a support question. Is tech support available to work with the speakers prior to the conference as well as the day of the conference? Uh, we do not provide that tech support now. Okay. Got it. Um, somebody said this appears to be self service. Da, da, da. What about CEUs and, and capturing that kind of stuff for, for sessions? Uh, yeah, so yeah, Reggie and I have actually talked about this. There are, there are definitely ways to, you can track people's, there, there's a pretty extensive reporting analytics system in the back end. 
So a lot of it depends on your requirements for like, what does that look like? Um, you can, uh, for like the recorded, and I'm trying to remember for the recorded webinars, you can embed a survey link in there as well. So you, um, so a couple ways you can record or you can watch if people are logging in. So you have a report to show that. Um, you can require a survey with the recorded webinars. Um, so there really, there are various ways to be able to track if people have done what they need to do um, to be able to get their CEUs. Um, I know different industries have different thresholds uh, for what it takes to qualify for a CEU. Um, Got it. So it depends. So somebody said, can you p please repeat what you are offering associations until the end of the year? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so if you had a live event planned um, up basically scheduled up until or up through December of this year, we will give you the platform for 90 days, like this, like this event engagement module. Um, so we'll get you up and running and that 90 days starts, I like, like basically like once the members get uploaded to it, that 90 days starts ticking, um, but it gets you through your event. Um, and then for basically at least, at least two months, if not longer after the event. So you've got plenty of time to host your event, keep people interacting afterwards. Um, it's a good chunk of time. All right, so a couple of other questions here. Um, and, and we, we this, this discussion has come up in almost all the demos in terms of exhibit hall functionality. I know you showed the sponsors page. Have you guys had the, the occasion yet to link out to any other exhibit hall management kind of uh, software tools? Um, you can link out to, and I mean, it's a full content management system. Uh, so we have the capability to link out to anything. Um, from, so if you wanted to, like we don't have an, like if you had wanted a virtual exhibit hall, we don't offer that functionality. Um, so you could use another tool to do that. Um, depending on, you know, what exactly you're looking for. I know some people have done, you know, interactive Zoom, you know, Zoom happy hours, then done breakout rooms for like each exhibitor gets a breakout room, a sponsored breakout room, and people can go, um, you know, I want to go meet with ASAE. I want to go meet with comm partners. I want to go, you know. Um, and so then each one could have their own breakout room. You know, that can be scheduled kind of through the system, just like sessions would. Um, you know, we've seen people do things, you know, like I was mentioning, uh, you can have basically one of your tracks becomes a sponsor track. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you have a library where they can upload all of their resources, their white papers, their recorded demo. Um, and so they kind of each get you know, a, a library entry that has all of their sponsor information. Um, yeah. You can have a discussion group dedicated to the sponsors. So there, there are different ways to do it even within the system without going to an external tool as well. Got it. So. So Heather, thank you, first of all, and, and thank you for such a generous offer to our community in, in, yeah. in this time of need. Um, folks, I am going to take two minutes to bring up on the stage the folks who said that they would be a part of the wrap up. Um, and I'm going to give uh, Heather her graceful exit here. Um, we'll do the wrap up and then my goal is to get us all out of here before noon, which I think we'll be able to do pretty easily. Um, after the wrap up, we'll do a drawing. And again, uh, whoever wins that drawing will get a, a free registration to the technology conference coming up. So Heather, again, thank nice. you very much. Absolutely, thank you guys. Thank you, Reggie. So bear with me folks as I bring these other folks up here with us. Look for them real quick. And they'll start to show up on the screen here. Howdy, Bob. Good morning. Got a couple more to do here.
right. Yeah, I think we've got Scott and I'm looking for Candy to join us. There's Candy right there. <laughs> My camera. <laughs> how, how you guys doing? Good. How are you, Reggie? Good. I'm, I'm going to go around in order here. Just, just love to hear um, your takeaways from from the last couple of days of demos, or all the demos you've seen, um, and, and um, how that's going to aid you or not aid you in your process right now. So, Bob, I'll start with you. Well, thanks, Reggie, uh, for putting this all together for you and your team. Um, uh, the, the first thing is the, the indirect benefits, uh, you know, just a simple um, figuring out the likes, the dislikes, the things that I really, you know, camera angles flow from just the presentations that we can use and all the stuff that we provide for our members. Um, I, I, the super beneficial item was what the vendor think is important as they put everything into that 30 minutes mm -hmm. that really, you know, because when you go to the booth, they say they can do everything. Right. But when they're only given this 30 minutes, it really set, shows as a buyer what they think is is really important. As you said earlier this morning, um, we got as much out of the chat as the presentations. Uh, the, the community is is through all of this meetings, virtual meetings and others have been terrific. Um, it, it was also a, a, just a side thought I had. It, it, it really says something about our community because almost uh, across every single vendor, you can tell that they generally like working with associations and in this marketplace. Absolutely. They weren't just making a, a pitch, right? It's certainly just what we saw with Heather as well and, and what Higher Logics offered. Um, for me, I've learned that we really need to focus and tighten up our focus on our December meeting and really de define better what we're going to offer and deliver. Um, not it's not just pivoting to the virtual but it's really focusing in on, on what's important um, and then um, uh, you know so important to have our marketing team in the, the at the decision-making table uh, as we do this that it's not just about learning and, and not just about the meeting folks but how important the marketing um, is and uh, just one comment to your you're uh, uh, willing to put together some kind of, of sheet or, you know, you know, and I know they don't want to share their pricing, but what they can do and can't. I think talking about, like, are their clients small, medium, large, just even some direction would help us determine a little bit who's worth spending more time on to, to get those individualized demos. So thanks very much, Reggie. Yeah, thank you. So, so one of the things I'm going to do is, and I thank you guys for all the stuff in the chat that'll give us some directional stuff. Um, is if we do another demo day, it just might be, it might not be a demo day. It might be me getting a whole bunch of these vendors to do another uh, a, a pre a can demo and ask them to hit the things that you guys have asked them to hit in in the chat area. And that way you, you can do it at your own timing rather than have to be physically here at, at, at some particular time. So, um, but we're going to get to the bottom of this. I promise you that. Um, <laughs> Andy? Reggie, I, I echo Bob and thank you for doing this. Um, we made the decision last week that our November meeting will be virtual this year. Um, have been looking at lots of programs over the last two months have found lots of things that will be the education piece for us. But for us, we do a huge trade show as part of our event. So that's a huge piece that I've been struggling with. And one of the things um, after yesterday, my assistant and I sat down, because we're a staff of two, and we scheduled a Zoom meeting with our, our exhibitors mm -hmm. uh, to really sit down with them and say, what is important to you all? what do we need to be able to provide as those takeaways for you? Um, and that's going to help us also being able to look at which of these companies do trade show as part of it versus those who maybe think they do trade show and just give you a list. Right. Um, you know? <laughs> so um, I think that that's a huge part of our show and it's a huge part of what we do as our conference. Mm -hmm. So being able to look at who does what is great for us. So thank you very much.
Thank you. You know, one of the things that I, that's, that's a takeaway for me, and I actually I, I was thoughtful about it before we start, is, um, you know, fighting the urge to try to duplicate everything that you do in your face-to-face -face environment in a virtual environment. You know, really yeah. take some time to think about, you know, which things might, might not work virtually, but probably more importantly, where can you innovate? Where can you provide things that you could never do uh, in a face-to-face -face environment that you could do in a virtual environment? The question I keep asking our staff over and over is um, if we remove location and time from the equation of planning our conferences, what becomes available to us? What becomes available? I've seen an association have a week-long conference where the time slot was from 9 to 12 every day. I've seen that happen, for example. Uh, I've seen an association uh, decide to do um, because of the, 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 the time zones uh, effect on things, having all of the um, exhibiting things in the morning and in the evening, and then having all the education sessions in the middle of the day so that the West Coast folks didn't have to get up so early and the East Coast folks didn't have to stay up so late. So there's all kinds of options. Scott? Uh, um, thanks, Reggie, for putting this on. Um, for me, uh, I work at the International Institute of Business Analysis. So I look at this from a business analyst perspective. Uh, we're looking at virtual conferencing, what we use. I've already started an internal exercise to talk about all the stakeholders and what their needs are. So we're starting to hammer this from a needs perspective. I jumped into the session really to see what types of options and functionality is out there. Um, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of getting caught by bells and whistles. Right. Um, but it's certainly good to understand and start to hear some best practices of what are out there. A couple good discussions uh, yesterday and today on that. Uh, so that's been helpful. Um, I do like the idea of a spreadsheet. I've actually started one so I can share that with you afterwards um, to sort of help filter out. Uh, so for example, for me, uh, I don't see it an option for software that gets downloaded. Uh, I work in a number of corporate environments and they just shut that stuff down now. Uh, right. So for me, that's one of those limiting factors. Um, there's probably a few others in there that would uh, play in that criteria, but the AMS integration for me is really key. You know, that's where all our data lives and breathes. Right. If we're able to register for people from there, we're able to um, track CDUs, uh, that's large, that's significant for us. Uh, so uh, overall, great session. Uh, would love to continue this conversation and happy to share uh, learnings as we go through the process. Absolutely. So um, I will uh, ask you to please do send me that spreadsheet. And it will, there were a couple of others shared. Um, and I'm going to probably get the team together. I, I know Larry and Amy are listening. They're probably cringing right now. Um, but we're going <laughs> to try to use all of that information to put together a, a list of, of questions we would want to have answered by by all the vendors, and then I'm gonna send that to all the vendors, even the ones who couldn't participate in this particular thing and say, you have to answer these questions to be on our list of things that we put back out in the community so we have a comprehensive list. And then I'm gonna ask each one of those vendors to do their own half hour demo and just make that available um, um, as a way to, to answer some of the questions we have. So let me thank you guys, first of all, you, you in particular for joining me in the wrap up um, Candy, you look like you had something to say. I was just going to suggest if uh, if you have the option and collaborate, maybe start a temporary room and collaborate where we can continue these conversations amongst us all specific to going virtual. So why don't I uh, do it, that? Yeah, it may only last six months, but I think it would be a huge help to the community because I learned so much from other folks in the chat as well. So why don't we say we're going to do that, okay? And it'll be, and I'll send out. We'll send out an email after after the event here um, with the name of that community, and we'll put people, all the people who, who are in the session here in the community, and you guys can have at it, okay? I think it'd be great. Okay. That's what thank we'll, you. That's what we'll do. A couple of other things I just learned through the day, um, the two days. One is that there's platforms. Um, that started with different origins. You know, some of them started with LMS systems, some of them started with community platforms, some of them started from event apps. So you got options there in terms of where you want your focus to be. Um, one thing, I, and I know I've said it a, a couple of times now, but we, you know, we're making this, these short-term decisions 
that might have a really long tail. We don't know how long the, um, we're gonna be in the environment we're in. And at some point, we gotta really think about uh, strategizing how this fits into our overall environment in a kind of a more comprehensive way. Um, the third thing is, is, you know, I know we're all used to and really want things to be in a nice, tidy package, um, but there may not be that. So for example, you might see one of these systems that has every single thing you want except for the exhibit hall portion. Mm -hmm. So it might make sense to then find somebody who does the exhibit hall portion really well and link out to that. Um, or you might be focused on exhibits and realize the exhibit hall folks don't have a good LMS kind of feature for your learning thing. So you might be combining some things together uh, to solve your problem. So um, I'm going to, um, again, thank you guys for joining me for this wrap up here. I'm going to now do the drawing that we do um, to, to see who gets that, that free registration. Let me get there. I think I got this all set up. Again, all the names are in there. Let's hope that the person here to us. Uh... Well, wait a minute, I can't do that. I forgot to share my screen. So you guys didn't, you guys didn't see anything, did you? So let me share my screen and go back to that fanfare again. Hold tight. All righty, let me share my screen. It should be now shared. You guys see it there? We do now. All right. So, so Larry, do me a favor and check and see if Tiffany's there. I think I saw Tiffany in the chat area, so she's more than likely there. Tiffany, if you're there, raise your hand, and Larry will check and see if you're there. Because you have to be present to win. I'm not seeing her at first glance, but... Look for Colorado Society of CPAs in the list. Let's see. Yes, we have a winner. <laughs> Good. So Tiffany will join Sarah at our technology conference and, uh, and we'll get that all taken care of. Tiffany, we'll be sending you an email with how you can uh, take, take advantage of that. Um, guys, again, I can't thank you enough for, for sticking with us for um, a, 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 what, what has been a kind of a marathon, if you will, of, of, of of demos, but a, a, marathon, a marathon of us sharing information with each other. Uh, we really appreciate it. I, I, we, we're gonna um, work through all the, the comments in the chat area, figure out how to um, augment what we've done already in terms of information, um, add all that stuff to the, the various areas where you can have, get access to those resources. Again, in the app and the link that you've been using. And we will create a collaborate group. Um, probably will be Wednesday when we create that. Uh, and. Uh, start to get those resources in there as well, all right? So thank you very much and look forward to seeing you guys in person sometime soon, hopefully. But if not, we'll chat in the virtual space. Thanks, Reggie. All righty, take care, everyone. Thank you.